Hello and welcome to a review of periodic trends on the periodic table. Uh, two things we're going to be talking about in terms of periodic trends are atomic radius and ionization energy. The atomic radius, as it sounds, is the uh, distance from the atomic nucleus to the outermost stable electron orbital in an atom in equilibrium. Um, for simplicity's sake, we're going to say it is the size of a atom the space between the protons in the center and the electrons in the outermost energy shell. The ionization energy, we think about energy, is the amount of energy we need to remove an electron, kind of bump it off, from a given kind of atom or molecule. Okay, This involves uh, a later topic with bonding, uh, but we'll get to why ionization energy may increase or decrease as you move around the trends in the periodic table. Okay, here we have a periodic table of the elements, and you can notice that there's different color coding involved that we're not really going to get into in this review, uh, but what you are going to notice is that there are vertical columns, which we refer to as groups, so group one and group two, okay, for example, and we're going to refer to moving down the group, and when we say moving down the group, we're going to say literally from top to bottom. I'm going to say down the group things happen. Okay? And then we're also going to refer to the term period. And period, we're going to say we're moving across these rows. Hence why it's called the periodic table. Okay? And things change as you move across a period. Cha things change while you move downward in groups. Okay. Now this periodic table graphic does a great job presenting the different trends on the periodic table and you can see three different colored lines. Uh, we're going to focus right now on only two of them. The red lines which are the atomic uh, size that's up here where you can see moving left atomic size increases and moving down atomic size increases on the red lines. Another trend we will be looking at is the ionization energy which is the blue arrows here. And you can see we're going in an opposite direction. The ionization energy increases. The amount of energy needed to break off an electron increases as you move to the right and also increases as you move up. So they're kind of inverse of each other. So the top right area up in here is the greatest ionization energy, okay, which I'll put a big capital I there. And the lower left over here is the biggest radius or atomic size. So really the distance from those locations can kind of help you identify which is bigger or which atom takes the most energy to break off an electron. A really cool graphic here is the periodic table as atomic size or atomic radii. So as you can imagine, as you move down a group, so for example group 1 on the far left, see as I move down here the atomic radius gets bigger. And this is true in all these different groups. Even up here, boron moving down to titanium, it's getting bigger. And even the noble gases over here, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger because there are more electrons, there are more electrons, and that means we need more energy levels. So each in this bottom row here have more energy levels. Well, the question we might want to ask ourselves is, well, why is it that down in the lower right area, why aren't they nice and big then? They've got a lot of electrons. Why, are they nice, why aren't they nice and big? Well, they also have a lot of protons in the nucleus. And what happens is it starts to keep the, uh, the gravity of the protons, keeps the electrons nice and close and the energy rings a little bit smaller. Most important thing to understand, though, here is 
that on the lower left hand area here, and we'll take a look at some Bohr models in a little bit, where if you look at cesium down there, you can take a look on the lower left and see how large these are, because you've got these large energy rings. But let's take a look at the periodic table, let's look at some Bohr models. So as we said, as we move down a group, the radius gets bigger because there's more energy levels are being filled. Okay, So it's very important to consider when looking at this to analyze a Bohr model. So our Bohr model is pretty much shows the electron energy rings and the electrons outside the nucleus. So if you look at number 11, which is sodium, sodium, which is of course Na, over here with 11 protons, has 11 electrons on the outside. Two on the first energy ring, eight on the next, and then it has one on the next energy ring. So there's three total energy rings out there, which gives it a certain size. But now, if we move downward to number 87, which is rancium, which of course I could have just put FR, here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 energy levels because it's in the 7th period or the 7th row of the periodic table. 87 protons is 87 electrons. You can count them if you want. The truth is, there's still only one valence electron on the outside filling that seventh energy level, but seven energy levels is going to make a larger radius as you move down a group. What I don't understand is why cesium would have that much of a bigger radius than, let's say, polonium. They're in the same period. Well, the truth is, it happens to be in the number of protons. If there are 55 protons in cesium versus 84 protons, that means the mass is going to be that much greater. In this case, polonium's mass is 209 versus 132.91. The bigger the mass, the bigger pull that the nucleus has on the electrons. So despite the fact that the electrons want to fly out, the electrons cannot fly out, so it keeps the electron energy levels tighter packed and closer to the nucleus. So the more protons, the closer the electrons are going to float outside the nucleus. So despite the fact that cesium and polonium are in the same period, which is down towards the bottom of a group, towards the bottom of these vertical groups here, Again, as you move to the right across, it does get smaller because here we have more protons, more pull on the electrons, keep them a little bit closer. Pretty interesting stuff. So can you answer the following question? As you move down a group on the periodic table, how is the atomic radius affected? At this point, we should be able to answer the question that as you move down, the atomic, radi atomic radius increases because you've got more energy levels, energy shells, to fill. The atomic number is going up, so the number of electrons is going up, therefore you need more electron energy levels, up through seven periods, seven rows, to fill. Therefore, we're going to see an increase in atomic radius. Now, if we want to move on and talk about ionization energy, we're again looking for energy that it takes to remove an electron. Now, ionization energy increases, the energy needed, increases as you go across and up. Okay, So, in this case, it takes more energy to remove electrons from, let's just say, sulfur than it does, let's say, platinum. Okay? So the question is, which takes more energy, sulfur or platinum? It takes more energy to remove electrons off of sulfur. We're going to get into an interesting little analogy called the party metaphor. I'll explain this. So the party analogy lets us explore things like 
Why is it more difficult? Why does it take more energy to break off electrons of oxygen versus, let's say, beryllium? Okay, so let's look at the valence electrons. The valence electrons of oxygen, there are actually six electrons in the outer shell. So this is oxygen. So here you see these red dots representing the six valence electrons. Now, if I just take a different color, let's just say orange. And orange represents kind of, let's just say, a friendship bond between these six people at a party. Those six people at a party, okay, are having a good old time. No one wants to leave. They're all together. They're all dancing. It's really, really great. But now, let's take a look at beryllium. Beryllium only has two valence electrons. So beryllium, Be, only has these two guys here. But here's the issue. The issue is these two guys are on the outside and there's a bunch of other people partying inside. There's all these other electrons are all bonded they're all on the inside and they're having a great time and they're all bonded and they're all connected and they have a lot of great friendship and a lot of force carrying them together it's very easy for these two these two red ones right here these two valence electrons to just bump off and break off and leave. It was much, much more difficult to have these six people over here at the party that are really happy and closer together break off. So that's the party analogy. But let's just take a look at an even more significant situation, which would be something like hydrogen. In hydrogen, you have just one valence electron. One lonely valence electron. That's it. It's like a one-man party. So hydrogen is going to have even less. It's going to want to bond. It takes basically any, any energy at all to break it off. Hence, hydrogen is on the far left and top of the periodic table. This one electron can bump off very, very easily. Therefore, the ionization energy is really, really low. And again, as you head across the periodic table towards, let's say, oxygen, it's much more difficult to break those links between those electrons on that outer shell. Here, take a look at some Bohr models. They look kind of similar, cesium and bromine. Cesium is on the far left of the periodic table. It has one valence electron. Now, let's just, in red, circle where the party's at. The party is all in here. All those electrons are having the time of their lives. But, sadly, very sadly, out here is one lonely electron. One lonely electron. It's very easy and does not take a lot of ionization energy for this electron to bump off, maybe go bond, metaphorically find another party. Well, where's the party at for bromine? Well, for bromine, the party is in here, but the truth is, take a look at that outermost shell. The outermost shell has two, four, six, seven people, seven electrons, and I'll even color that in orange, seven electrons out here. Two, four, six, seven, and they're all having a good old time. They feel included in the party. It's going to take much more energy to get them away. And now for the textual learners, if you look at the periodic table, consider the valence electrons of each element. Oxygen 
has six valence electrons, which equals, in the metaphor, six friends at a party hanging out to each other dancing. Difficult to break. You need a good amount of energy to come in, and bust off one of those friends, and be like, let's go somewhere else. They all want to stay. They're having a great time. Beryllium, there's only two valence electrons, which is only two people on that outer part of the party. It's easy for them to just leave. Sodium, similar to hydrogen, only has one valence electron. It's one lonely person who's really not having much fun. So this person will easily leave and move to party or bond with others. Well, as a result of watching this, you should be able to order elements from small to big or vice versa in terms of atomic radius and ionization energy. You should be able to describe why the radius of an atom gets larger as you move down a group and why the radius stays small towards the right of the periodic table. Also, you should be able to describe why more energy is needed to remove an electron the further right you move on the periodic table. I hope this was helpful and good luck.